Hello friends, welcome back to part 8 of my Tesla earnings forecast video review series. I'm joined by Loki here. Yes, he's saying hi today. Most days he's, he's pretty quiet. But uh, he's, he's talking some to you today. Say hi to the folks at home, Loki. Say hello. Hello. Alright, uh, so what are we talking about today? We're talking about part 8 in my Tesla earnings forecast video review series. <laughs> Yes, we are. Loki's fired up for part eight. He really wants you to know he's enthusiastic about this episode. All right, so let me share my desktop with you and see where we left off. As you can keep an eye on Loki barking his little chihuahua head off in the Loki cam while I uh, proceed to the next tweet in my forecast thread to talk about. Tweet number 10. Loki loves tweet number 10. This chart illustrates how ending the wave affects Tesla's quarterly finished goods inventory level. I made a bunch of videos about this you can search for. The more vehicles produced per week, the harder it gets to deliver all of them by the end of each quarter. So what does this chart do? And have you ever seen anybody else make a chart like this? I would hazard a guess no. Uh, nobody else makes a chart like this one to my knowledge I had to get very creative to be able to make it at all uh, so here's what Tesla's inventory production and deliveries look like if you put them all on a single chart uh, so let's use as our example Q1 of 2023 that's right here so this blue bar here is giving you the beginning inventory then on top of that is the production. So what do you have from the combined height of the beginning inventory and the production? That's your total vehicles available for sale. You cannot sell more vehicles in any given quarter than you had to begin with for that quarter, plus the number of vehicles you made during that quarter. That's the maximum number of deliveries there could be, right? Then the green bar next to it shows how many vehicles did actually get delivered out of those vehicles available for sale. What's that leave you with? The pink bar, which is telling you the ending finished goods inventory count. So these short bars down here at the bottom are showing you how many vehicles there were at the end of each quarter. The orange bar is telling you how many were produced, and the green bar is telling you how many were delivered. That's how to look at this uh, chart. Uh, over time and as you can see the ratio between short bars and tall bars is still the same as it used to be many years ago when the bars were just a lot shorter what what do you take away from that I believe the takeaway the proper takeaway is the more vehicles you produce per quarter the harder it becomes to be able to deliver all of them before the end of the quarter right and the more expensive it gets to try to deliver all of them by the end of the quarter. You have to pay a lot in expedite fees if you were trying to deliver all the vehicles you produce during a quarter before the end of that quarter. Um, and Tesla has stopped trying to do that. And what that does is it lowers the cost per vehicle delivered when you just... Uh, don't sweat how long it's going to take the vehicle to get from the factory to its buyer. However long it takes, it takes. Let's do that in a cost-effective manner and not worry about um, trying to, to deliver them all before the end of the quarter. So you, you do get an unfavorable impact on working capital from that, so you're a little less profitable every quarter that you leave a lot of ending inventory. But to a certain extent, it's unavoidable. You're going to have higher inventory levels the more vehicles you produce. Um, Tesla is a growth company, and it's growing, right? The revenue goes up, the deliveries go up, the earnings go up, but the ending inventory also goes up, right? You can't keep them very, very low artificially, or it would be extremely expensive for you to try to. So here's my forecast for Q3 and Q4. You can see less production and less deliveries expected in Q3, but more production and more deliveries expected in Q4 at uh, all-time record highs. And I'll show you a very quick uh, demonstration. Here's my live Excel earnings forecast model. I'll just back it up to the inventory chart if I can find it. Here it is. 
And I'll show you, this is actually a live chart. Uh, let me reduce the zoom on this. Uh, let's try 125%. That'll be fun. Yeah, there we go. So the chart that you're seeing is for all sites and models, but I can change that to be anything I want. I can make it just Model S. So here's what the Fremont Model S uh, production and deliveries looked like. You see they got zeroed out during the Plaid refresh time period. Let's take a look at uh, Fremont Model X. Uh, similarly, the same kind of pattern for it. Here's the Fremont Model 3 and what that looks like. Really steady over the past uh, many quarters for the Fremont Model 3. Uh, Fremont Model Ys look like this. There weren't any being produced until the beginning of 2020. And then you can see what that looks like since. Uh, so I've got Total Fremont. Total Fremont looks kind of similar to the Total Global. Let's look at Shanghai Model 3 production. That's the first vehicle Tesla produced from Shanghai. Then the Shanghai Model Y comes next. So it looks like this with higher inventory levels, only a very recent phenomenon. They used to really keep uh, ending inventory low there by um, uh, shipping overseas for the first couple of months of the quarter or the first month and a half of the quarter. And then everything they made late in the quarter, they would deliver locally uh, to buyers in Shanghai in the last week. Uh, the same with Fremont, really. Uh, they would try and deliver as much as they could locally. Still no small robo-taxi production yet. Uh, so there's the combined Shanghai Model 3 and Y. Here's what the Berlin Model 3 looks like. Tesla hasn't made any. But I do have a placeholder for it here. There's the Berlin Model Y. Uh, a little bit of inventory expected to form in Q3 and Q4 for that vehicle. Then there aren't any Berlin European models either, but uh, if I scroll down a little, the total Berlin is kind of the same as the total Model Y. That's really all there is. Then in Texas, we've just recently gotten some Model Ys built, um, expecting a little bit of downtime in Q3 of 2023, and then back to a similar level in Q4 that we saw in Q2. Uh, Cybertrucks, what's going to happen there? Well, not very many in Q3, but then a lot in Q4. A lot is relative. You know, this this y-axis automatically adjusts itself to be however tall it needs to be to hold the data that's being returned. Um, so Cybertrucks will be higher in the future, uh, but for right now that's all you get. And there's Semi with an even smaller y-axis over here. This is what's in my forecast model for Tesla Semi, and with all of those combined, that's how you get to, well, I'll show you total, total taxes, and then all sites and models. This is the original chart that we saw uh, here. And that's the exclamation point on this week's video from Loki. Uh, and <laughs> with that, I'll outro, and I'll say if you've enjoyed today's video, click the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, why not go ahead and subscribe to my channel? And uh, I'll see you in the next one.